Cash Build is the largest retailer of building materials in Southern Africa with a market cap of 3.4 billion rand. And it's been listed on the JSE since 1986. It sells directly to cash paying customers through its 191 stores around Southern Africa, has a price to earnings ratio of 10.6 and a dividend yield <coughs> of 3.7%. And Paul, your customers are steeped in this one, aren't they? Well, it's a stock we've been adding to our portfolios recently, but it's done extremely poorly since then. So I want the share price to go up urgently. So you and need somebody to buy them. Exactly. And I cannot understand why no one has, because I'm thinking ShopRite would be a potential buyer, Spa that we've spoken about, MassMart that we've spoken about. I mean, these stores are beautifully positioned in the peri-urban areas around the cities, as well as in major kind of development areas. Like I was the other day passing through the Bushbuck Ridge area. Massive store there, and just houses on every single hill you could see for the 150 kilometers around it. This is the kind of retailer, it's come under pressure, yes, because sales have been a bit sloppy, but it's perfectly positioned, it's bite-sized, and I can't see why somebody Daniel, doesn't want to buy it Daniel, can anybody help Paul out there and put in an aggressive <laughs> offer? He wants an aggressive offer for cash build. <laughs> if you is look it possible? At, if you look at what, what most of the guys are doing, they're all preferring to build their own network. Um, that could be partly for the reason that maybe someone has approached them, I don't know, but it could be that their selling price is too high. And like I was mentioning before, if you buy something for too high a price, it doesn't really matter, matter what you do with it, you're not going to get the returns that you're looking for. So, sorry for you, Paul. Well, look, I mean, the history here is this group been listed for quite a while. It was quite a fun company in the early days. So one of the first to incentivize employees on the floor <coughs> back in the day. Pat Goldrick, the Irishman, took yes. this thing, built up a 10% stake himself, did fabulous work with it. It just developed great growth, even you know, at times market was a bit sloppy. He then retired. So the new CEO, Vanna Diago, was the old CFO. And I think maybe it's just one of those cases where change of management is synchronized with a bit of a downturn in the market. So people then get a bit iffy and so on and so forth. But I really think at 130 Rand a share, it's one of those smaller retailers that trades on a 10 PE, which is very attractive. Daniel, mm. a PE, a 10, attractive. So uh, it's, always more, it's always more of a focus to look at the Ford PE and the worry for me with the stock is where that PE is going to be when the next results come out. The reason why I say that is because the interim results were, were quite disappointing. Uh, you know, profit growth went backwards. I think these guys are finding it quite difficult. They said that trading since the interim period, the revenue line went backwards. So the negative operational gearing you get from that could be quite large, you know, with your revenue stagnating and your operating costs well, increasing. Well, none of this sounds like good news for you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. That, could very ma that could very quickly change a 10 PE into something a bit higher. Mm. So, I'm a, so that's, that concerns me to some degree. Well, I think, Paul, before we hear any more downside <laughs> for yeah, you, let's call hot or not on cash build. No, no, clearly these guys just sell, you know, bags of cement, the timber frames for the ceilings, the board, you know, the basic, basic stuff. But I really think what's going to happen is not that they must do anything different, the demand for the product needs to recover. <coughs> and I think that will happen, maybe not tomorrow, but I'm still hot on this one and think it ought to trade higher. Daniel, hot or not on cash build? Uh, I think the demand might take a bit longer to recover. The reason why I say that, is, say that is because I think they are very exposed to the lower end, guys who are dependent on things like social grants. And those guys have a bigger percent of their shopping basket and things like food, transport, etc. So once again, with inflation coming through, they're going to have less to spend. Their I hibernation it, is going to be a long, I think it's going to hit them the hardest. So I'm a bit concerned about that. And based off that, I'd say not. JD Group.